Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a very, very interesting webinar, which is the first of its kind in the market. So good to see everybody here. Um, and I hope we are adjusting to the new working environment, right? Lots of webinars, lots of virtual meetings. But the foundation is so long as we keep ourselves busy and productive, I think everything will always turn out. So once again, thank you for joining this webinar. Good to have you on board. Um, I can see a lot of familiar faces here. Um, um, and I think it goes to our uh, interest in the topic of discussion today. So um, we have limited time, so I'll quickly go straight to the point without wasting so much of our time. Today, we'll be talking about the role of commodities data and the development of the commodities ecosystem in Nigeria. And with me here, I have some very, very interesting um, seasoned professionals that will be sharing experience with us from um, everything in commodities as it relates to data availability, data gathering, and the whole infrastructure. So allow me to introduce our guests, um, our panelists to you. We have three very seasoned professionals here. I'll allow them to introduce themselves. Um, we have Mr. The Dr. DG Okwakunle. Can we start with you? Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm DG Okwakunle, I'm Kinos Edge Consulting. I'm a market analyst with Kinos Edge Consulting, and we do a lot of work with Apex Commodities. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What what did you feel to mention was he's a is a medical doctor turned data scientist, so we get that flavor, flavor, flavor of perspective from him. So next on the list will be our uh, um, Aisha da Aisha Daud Daud. Um, she works with FDC. So Aisha, please introduce yourself. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Aisha. Uh, strategic Associate, commercial analyst, financial analyst. I work with financial derivatives, and it's a pleasure joining you. Thank you very much. Aisha is also a seasoned professional. She's been in the commodity space for a while now. She's um, FDC is one of the um, powerhouse and most respected data research firms in the country, and we believe we will be able to leverage on your wealth of experience on this. Thank you for joining us. And last but not the least is um, Oluwadara Adekunle. Hello, every, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. My name is Dara Adekunle. I work with the USAID Nigerian Agribusiness Investment Activity as the Regional Agribusiness Officer. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dara is also a seasoned trader of commodities in Nigeria. Um, the first time I met her, we were discussing how do we go about trading ginger from sourced from Nigeria and sold in the um, European markets? So thank you all for coming on board. Um, and I also want to use this um, medium to welcome all our um, listeners on this. Um, we really appreciate you. Um, just some quick rules. Um, we'll be taking questions as we go on. We have some questions um, that or some topics that our panelists will be discussing. If you have any question, feel free to drop it on board. Um, my colleague, Adam Nautino, will give response to any questions we can't discuss here, and anyone that we could will discuss it here. So we'll be running this um, discussion for the next 45 minutes, after which we we'll take about 15 minutes of questions and answers for the ones we could. And then we, 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 we enjoy everybody to be free to participate. Let's hear your perspective. Um, and let's enjoy this session, right? So let's jump right in. Commodities, role of commodities data in the development of the ecosystem in Nigeria. Now, the issue of data is not new to Nigerians, right? Ever since, I mean, anytime we talk about any issue facing Nigeria, especially in terms of um, security or getting things done seamless, we always revert back to data. Why is it that we don't even have something as basic as a, as a social security number, which is available globally, right? So it's clear that we are not doing the best we could as regards data aggregation and storage. But the discussion here is about commodities data. 
So the, from the little data we have, uh, which we, which most seasoned speakers used to use as opening speeches, um, Nigeria is a country with 70% adult working population working in the agricultural sector. Nigeria's agriculture in Nigeria contributes 25% to the GDP, receiving less than 5% in financing. Yes, we have those data. But when we talk about agricultural data, what do we really mean? And why, why is it relevant in the Nigeria we have today? Deji. So basically, agricultural data is quite um, broad if um, you're not being specific as to um, what sector of the agricultural value chain you are referring to. Um, but for a background, um, I would just like to break it down um, by the value chain, um, the pre-upstream, the upstream, midstream, and downstream sectors of the agricultural commodities market. Um, the pre-upstream um, sector may not be very relevant to those who watch commodities, but it's relevant in you know, its totality to everyone because that is where the inputs come in. You want to know um, how much um, land, um, arable land the country has. Um, you want to know um, how much fertilizer is being imported and being produced and available to farmers herbicides and so on but then in the in the upstream and midstream you're talking about um how much um commodities is being how much agro commodities is being produced actually um in the um the production arm which is the supply arm of the value chain um which is um, brings into context a lot of the work that apex does um in churning out um, agricultural commodities data because, you know, um, the price you get in the market is a reflection of, you know, the um, depth and liquidity of the market in terms of um, how much commodities are available at every point in time. So when you look at um, the type of data that is relevant in the market today, most people focus basically on price data because it's what is readily, readily available based on the work that FX has done in you know, harvesting this data from the farm gates and the market points um, in relation to where they are being produced and creating market linkages to those who um, are in demand of these commodities. So you want to, um, the best sense of um, 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 expression for this is you want to know um, how these prices are doing over time. So basically, it's a time series of um, what is available. So if we want to um, um, approach it from the point of how this catalyzes the agricultural sector, you look at the end of you look at it from the end of those who are at the demand side, the industrials, um, domestic um, consumption, um, and um, 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 other, others that may um, have um, use for these commodities for maybe not um, indirect use like um, starch and so on. So Apex is at the center of all this um, trying to churn out data to make everyone understand how um, these prices um, undulate within the agricultural sector and within the um, um, within the crop cycles of each commodity. So I don't know if this will be a nice time for me to um, um, say um, the work we do on this, the work we do to gather this data and distribute I, I think we'll get back to that later so that we just go in a sequential manner. Thank you very much. So when you're talking, you mentioned three key parts. You already delineated the ecosystem to the downstream, midstream, midstream, and upstream, right? Yes. Um, Aisha, my understanding is uh, when you look at the upstream, up, upstream part of the business, right? Or is it the downstream part now? The end users of this data, when you talk about the large consumers, right? It's red, you readily see information on the consumers of data to the extent that they disclose it in their financials. But what about the other part of, this, of the ecosystem? from the upstream, the farmers, the midstream, the players from aggregation to delivering it to the buyers. 
what do you see about um, commodities data and why do we need to have a structured data in the sector? So currently, the ecosystem is structured in such a way that it's not easy to, gain, to gather data. Farmers in, in, in developed countries, farmers are set up such a way that they are registered. You know the amount of local, small, skilled farmers that you have. But here in Nigeria, farmers are set up in such a way that you don't even know the numbers. The number of small farmers are uncountable. However, we know that we have up to about 20 big farms here in Lagos. But we just numbers are made up on probabilities, permutation, and combinations. We just use ideas to have like okay, this is the total yield. If uh, if a farm can produce about 20 metric tons from an hectare, we can say okay, the two the 20 big farms in Lagos will produce about 40 or 400 you know metric tons like that. And this is a big issue. If we cannot have a synchronized data of the amount of produce that we have as a country yearly, I doubt um, seeing us, seeing us you know, to be able to have food security in the near future. This is very, very worrisome. Thank, th thank you very much for that perspective, right? And I like the um, parallel you've drawn with developed economies, right? So in the developed world, you see farmers, you can identify clusters of farmers. There's traceability, you can see the farmers, and you can easily estimate or actually capture actual data of production from their side. But it's very much data. You can. Yeah. So so much so, okay, we'll get back to that. Dara, from your experience in trading in Nigeria, uh -huh. what 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 has the absence of credible data cost you? And what are the things you think? should be put in place to make this data relevant at that level? Okay, thank you very much, Akin, for that question. Um, I'm going to relate myself as uh, an investor in the agri space, since I also work for the agribusiness investment activity. And uh, one thing we all know is that data is very important because it helps with decision making. So um, one thing over the years that I've, I've observed is that um, you can you cannot even um, get like trade sequences sometimes um, from the field. And that's because um, the information, there's like an information mismatch between even um, the off takers, even the international market and really the local producers. So you find out that sometimes um, smallholder farmers can just decide to set a price on their commodity, which does not even match with what is obtainable. So, um, with relevant data, I'll comment what FX is doing and a couple of other organizations, uh, information about um, pricing history, information about the behavioral patterns of um, smallholder farmers, the information about the, the value chain as a whole from um, production, transportation, storage, and, and the market. These are key segments in the value chain that data is important. And with relevant data, um, it's going to be very important to, to make the right decisions on the kind of investment to make in the sector. Thank, thank you very much for, for that, Dara. There's a comment here from Jacqueline Yawa, and she was like, she's like, without data, you cannot attract capital, either right. debt or equity. True. Without equity, there can be no startup, startup yeah. business. And without debt, you can't scale up, right? Mm -hmm. But for investors, the key thing is, they need some key matrices. If we need to build a credible source of data in the country, what are the places we need to look at to, to capture this data? Papadeji, how do you think we can get credible data in the country? So you were asking about um, basics of gathering data? Yes. What are the key sources we need to look at to gather data that is relevant to attract debt and equity capital into the country? So the key basics, first of all, I would look at the cost of inputs, the um, produce, the fertilizers, the kind of mechanisms these farmers they used to you know produce the 
um, what's the name, commodities. So if we, have been, if we were able to scale out the process of getting the inputs, how they do it, what it costs them to actually produce for the year or for the season, then we can now tally with, you know, what they produce, what goes into wastage, and how to crop or minimize this wastage. Because I would, um, commodity trading is not about margins. The margins is built upon the value, uh, upon the volume. If the volume is not there, if they are losing a lot of produce after such a season, there's a lot of produce, they're going to be, you know, losing out. And but we, do, do we even have data for this produce that are lost? That's the problem. That's where we have to come in. Now, that's where the stakeholders in this ecosystem, the corporate bodies, the banks, the insurance companies, logistic companies, even um, set itself, even government. We need government to come into here, but it's going to be private sector driven. We don't want government to come in here and come and, you know, take ownership, but we just want them to support the system, create an enabling environment, create infrastructures, create predictable agricultural policies. If I bet me, I'll bet me you the percentage of the budget plan that goes into the agricultural sector is so minimal. We need them to, you know, get these data together and see why they need to increase the budget for agricultural sector up to about ten percent of the total budget. So, so that's a that's an interesting perspective you have there, and the premise is once there's increased allocation of funding to this sector then we start getting credible data from, from the sector, mm -hmm. right? Dara, in your experience, do you think that is the case? I mean, we have a lot of international organizations, DFIs, playing in the local commodities ecosystem. And yet, price information of inputs, even from local suppliers, local producers, even up to availability of price of, this date of um, these commodities is widely missing. Dara, do you think funding is the gap here, or what, what's your take on that? Okay, um, beyond funding, I would actually look at it as more like um, actual implementation, data validation, and um, synchronization of all the works that are currently ongoing. So I see a lot of development funds going into the development of the commodities ecosystem from the farm to the market. And so many people doing different things and, and sometimes even the same thing. But what I see is if there can be uh, a, a unified system where everybody works together, the, the development sector, the private sector, and the government, um, all this information that are pulled out can be central to all and available to all. Because if Apex has its own data and another company is going to get its own data and another development organization is going to get the same data, then why can't we just put it together, synchronize it and work together to have a system that is reliable and, and, and helpful to everybody? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. So you speak to having a central hub for synchronizing this data and making it available, right? And there's an interesting comment here, um, also from Jacqueline Yawa. She says, Ministry of National Planning should outsource this as a PPP and allow data hub run without government inter interference. DG, do you think this is a viable way to go? Do you think this is sustainable? Do you think we can get Nigeria from where we are now to the level of data availability and transparency that is enviable by other developed countries of the world? Okay, same stage is not okay. Yeah. Thank you for the question. Yes, I strongly believe that the independence of um, um, a data gathering mechanism would um, strongly um, favor the market um, in terms of the needs for the, um, the, the sector to grow. Um, it is very important for there to be an independence of um, such a body. And beyond that, there has to be some sort of um, quality control mechanism um, which will be provided as oversight from regulatory bodies like um, the SEC or whatever body is going to oversee the process. Um, but that independence is highly is very necessary for such a body to um, function. And um, 
to make that happen, I mean, it, it has to do with the stakeholders that are already involved in the sector and what they seek to gain from um, the sector and what their data needs are. Uh, so that will, you know, inform the process of what um, touch points will be necessary to focus on in terms of gather, and data gathering, data storage, and, and data dissemination. Thank you. Thank you. Aisha, you, you want to add something to this? Um, Aisha, you're on mute. So aside having a synchronized data or a synchronized a way to synchronize data, I believe strongly if we can develop a central warehouse where we can generate warehouse receipts in the six geopolitical stones to start with, we can have big corporate bodies to come synchronize loans or funds so that we'll have a standardized warehouse where this um, produce commodities can be preserved long enough to meet, you know, the running here and then the up and down dynamics of the market where prices go up. Because most of the times, prices tend to rise above the normal circumstance, above equilibrium, because the wastages, you know, are so large and then the produce just run out before the end of the peak period. And after the peak period, people start, you know, buying at crazy prices. That's what really drives the market dynamics to go in the directions where data can actually minimize them and go in the normal direction. Thank, thank you, thank you. You mentioned you alluded to, if, to a fact that there should be warehouse received systems in the sixth geopolitical zone, right? And um, DG made a very important point as well, saying there needs to be quality control on data coming out of there, right? And we say, coming from one of our listeners, it says, all it takes to get data downstream is proper organization. We should begin from the village level and aggregate to the LGA and state level. My question is, what are the infrastructure that are required to put in place to ensure that the quality of data emanating from the producing centers, either clustered as geopolitical zones or directly from the farmers, up to where the consumers are? What are the infrastructure that is required and what type of governance structure needs to be put in place to ensure this takes place? So as important as data is, management of data is also important. Infrastructures that we need to put in place, first of all, is an enabling business environment where you have the roads, the water, because you know, farmers are going to need all this during their harvest and cultivation period. Now moving on to the um, <laughs> excuse me. So now moving on, moving forward, the part where we need to clarify or you know certify this produce and then gather data from the farmers. If the farmers are in cooperatives, if the if the if they see that there is a profit margin when they sell to the central warehouse in their community. If they're able to gain about 15 to 20 percent profit margin, I bet you all many of those farmers in, the, in that community will be willing to sell their produce to that you know one particular source rather than going out to go and sell to other you know off takers. So if they're selling to a particular off taker, it's going to be easier to collect data from cooperatives in small scales like that. Collect it at the central warehouse there. The you know, control manager or control officer would verify the quality of this produce and then generate warehouse receipts for these farmers, which will help them to be able to, you know, assess funding or assess any other system put in place to support them and increase their um, produce, their mechanization, and their uh, and ease their cultivation. So now the, the thing is the clarification or the certification process. We have to make sure there's an independent body, an independent body like SON of Nigeria, where you know they incorporate with agreed business leaders, strategic owners here to see that the quality of what they are getting from these farmers are of you know high value. And where the quality is so low, there should be some sort of a fine or a discount in the value the farmer gets for it. So by the time all these are put together in place, when we have the logistic companies come in, you know, they ensure farmers do not, you know, go through stress or go through the ethics of getting their produce from the farm toward destination or to one hospital or to a central city. Logistics, com um, logistics companies come into this, it's coming to play here. There'll be easy movement of 
goods from the farm to the warehouse, then to strategic off-takers. There will be easy um, counting of or collection of data as to what we have, as to you know our prices, what we have in reserve, what we have in account, and all those other things like I can yeah, think of just now. Okay, um, thank you. Dara, you want to add something to that? In terms of what are the governance structures that we could put in place to ensure that the quality of data... So Aisha made mention of a lot of things relating to access to markets and then market price and co. What are the governance structures that could be put in place to ensure integrity of data emanating from all these areas? Yeah, I, I, I know that governance structure really centers around who holds the data, who saves it, who manages it, right? And um, you realize that definitely the government has a very huge role, but this has to trickle down to the grassroots, to the local government. Even though there might be um, a federal hold of this data, information has to come from the grassroots, which are verifiable. So I think a lot of focus should be on strengthening the institutions from the federal to the state to the local government level where you can walk in and have access to reliable data. Now, um, we all know that times have changed. We don't, um, technology has evolved. How can we how, how can we leverage on technology to ensure that data is properly um, collected, organized, managed, and then um, saved so that people who have who need information can... Alright, thank you, thank you, thank you for that, Dara. Um now, Deji, relating what Dara has said, what has your experience been over the past couple of years? Because about where you've been um with Kinos FX and Kinos Edge has been working over the last couple of years to ensure that um, we get market price data out to the public. What, are, what has your experience been in terms of being able to get this data, the quality of data you get, and then what are the measures you put in place to ensure that um, the information that is shared in the public is one that is credible and the appropriate governance structure is in place? Okay, um, thank you for the question. Um, my experience with um, Kinos Edge in relation to our work with um, FX commodities um, in terms of um, data gathering, um, processing, and dissemination has been, um, well, not so complex, but I'll simplify it as much as I can. Um, the process is quite simple. It's a stream, it's a streamlined from the farm gates to the final consumer, who are those who um, subscribe to. Um, the data reports from FX commodities. So this data is gathered, um, the price data um, for um, specific commodities are collected directly from farmers who are aggregated together by um, um, geographical locations. Um, we are talking of the Dandume, the Dawanao markets, the GBR, um, 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 Wanuni markets in, um, Mac in Makodi, um, and, and so on. The major markets across the production areas in the northern region of Nigeria, which we all know these are the um, primary production um, areas for agricultural commodities in Nigeria. So from that, we get the farm gate prices from these um, farmers who are aggregated um, to supply warehouses for FX commodities and also from the markets the market points, which um, you have the best possible price for um, a large volume of commodities at every point in time. This data is collected real time um, by market day across um, all markets, um, um, a, a great number of markets in the northern region of Nigeria, and also um, the, um, the middle belt where we have the north central states. Um, data is collected and transmitted via um, the internet to um, those who clean the data and ensure that the data is coming in as at when due. Um, this data is time to make sure that we have um, specific data for 
um, specific cycles because this market days come in cycles. The data is then cleaned, and then we use statistical and, and statistical techniques to um, seed out the um, 66 and um, 68 um, percent one standard deviation of those prices to weed out, you know, the, the excess noise because you know you may have um, maize coming in from um, say um, Dawanao in Kano at um, 68 naira per kg, and then you have maize coming in from Makodi at 50 naira per kg for a particular week. How do you balance this up to be sure you have a good reflection of the overall market? You, you know that um, from um, production data, you know that Makodi is, or Benue State is the food basket of the nation. That that is where a lot of agricultural produce is coming from. So we match this by statistical techniques to weed out the noise and take in the central, um, the central data, um, collate across, across the nation, and add um, a, logistic, um, a, logistic, a logistic cost to um, specific, um, price, um, specific demand areas across the country. Um, we have a specific demand area for maize, a specific, specific demand area for guinea corn, um, which is sorghum, specific for paddy rice, um, and so on. This data is then um, used to get the maximum price across board, minimum price across board, and then a standard average price, which is normalized for logistics, to show you that um, even though um, these prices are um, you know, sourced from specific markets, you get... Um, the cost with the logistics um, components um, for when you want to buy these commodities. And then this is compared against the FX um, trading floor, the FX trading floor prices. So these two prices are presented in the report weekly and monthly. And then on top of that, we also do some extra um, work to show you on a monthly basis what the volatility is like. So you have an idea how fast or how slowly prices are changing across board. And in addition to that also, for those who are in the market to invest in commodities as um, an alternative asset class, there is the FX, there is the FX um, price uh, index that shows you how the market is performing. So there's a sub-indices for maize, there's a sub-indices for, a sub-index for maize, a sub-index for um, um, paddy rice, a sub-index for soya beans. And this shows you how the market is performing. So at every point in time, you know um, if there's a rise or a fall. And then you can marry that with the um, price volatility and also the specific price for that month or for that week. Um, in you. all, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, Deji, sorry for cutting you short. I, I want Aisha to also give us a perspective from their own part. I'm aware that FDC does uh, a periodic pub publication on commodities markets. What was your experience in the data gathering process as well as um, what are the challenges you face in terms of getting accurate data that are reported? Uh, gathering of data for that, you know, articles, for those articles has been, always been a challenge because I can tell you, we go out ourselves to do market surveys. We go to big markets like the one in Oyinbo. We go to, you know, even for every lesson, we have to go out there ourselves to get the data because price varies. And you see a lot of things on the news. You see a lot of things on the blogs. You see a lot of things from NBS. You see a lot of things from that and all those places. Getting domestic price of commodities has always been ethic because we have to know someone that knows someone that knows someone. Your network has to be very wide. You have to know, you know, Farmers that are up there in the, you know, river in the farmyards where they, you know, do all these things and sell to hot takers. We have to place calls to people that sell and connect us with their suppliers. It's very difficult gathering, um, gathering data. It's all, it has always been very, very difficult. It's expensive. The amount, the money you spend on calls, the money you spend on, you know, maintaining these relationships that helps you get vital information and your information from the market. You can't just rely on what you see. You see something here on NBS. On NBS, you get a lot of prices that vary. So we know food baskets is the state, the, the state with food baskets is Benue State. Prices are not supposed to vary as much as that. You can see the price of one tuba of yam that weighs a kilogram. 
priced about you know two thousand plus in one state, and then in another state, maybe in the western you know southwest place, you see it costs about five thousand. That is very very drastic. There should be a you know of a kind of way we centralize price that is not as much as this, is not as low as that. So it's, it's it's been difficult, and I think the way to go is to first of all get everybody to be under a particular umbrella. Let's all know that this is the particular body that is, you know, regulating this ecosystem. This is the particular body that says we have such a certain amount of um, produce and is selling at this. And that price and that quantity, they are credible. They are not just making out figures from the blues or something. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So you alluded to the high cost of getting this data in place. And that's one of the things um, DG alluded to through the rigorous process they go to to present this data. Now the question is, for a minute, let's just assume we have the resources required to get all this data, and we have the infrastructure to collect this data. Where should this data sit? Should it sit with the private sector? Should it sit with the government? Federal Ministry of Agri? Should it sit with the central bank? Which entity or which type of organization is well positioned to be the custodian of agricultural commodities data in the country. Let me start with Dara on that, then I go to DJ and then Aisha. Okay, thank you, um, Akin. So um, data is collected for different purposes and by different people, right? And um, for example, if, if I'm collecting a data for my internal use, I want it to be housed internally. And if I want to share it with the public, I'll make it available for the public. In terms of housing, if we have a synchronized system, because what I see in Nigeria is there are research councils, there's the Federal Ministry of Agri, there's NBS, there is National Planning Commission. Um, um, there's a lot of agencies, really, that have data and, and they are not synchronized. So who houses it for me will be who... Who, who, who commenced the data collection? Who started it up? Because so, so you say the first movers should take advantage of the market and be the sole producer of this data, yeah? Yes, that, that, that's one of it. Secondly, I would say that uh, we can't keep working in silos, and that's why we need a synchronized system. I would, uh, let's all imagine. So I need to do an, an investment in, in maize processing. And... I don't have data. I've, I've gone to FMAD. I got some data. I did my own research. I got the data. I've gotten different information, but if there is a point I can go to, so maybe the Federal Ministry of Agriculture's data bank and um, verify my information, I'll be very confident in, um, in, in investing in the maize sector. So the issue of where data should be housed is a collective effort that has to go with the, with the decision. Obviously, we need um, the government. Government needs to be involved because we need things like this to be regulated. If we need to make, a, if we need to make a create an entirely um, institution to manage data or beef up an existing data institution to ensure that they are able to collect and manage data efficiently, then we need to do that, and we need to all agree together. If we need to develop a policy out of this, then let's go ahead. But this is my thinking. Thank you. Deji, in, a, in two minutes, where should this data sit? Who should be the custodian? So in my own, pri in my own opinion, primarily, I, I think the data here is to power the, um, the agri sector. So it has to do with um, um, a, collaborative, a collaborative effort um, within the sector to determine what the data needs are. And then beyond that, uh, if we say we want that data, housed by government, it's going to be government focused. Um, if we say we want it to be housed in an independent institution, then we can now do a stakeholder mapping of who and who needs data and what kind of data is needed. So in my own opinion, it is focused on the needs of the sector and um, primarily um, government has its needs, the private sector has its needs. But then the midpoint between this is, you know, determining how the investments are coming in and how it's going out and how market linkages are happening. So I think an independent, an independent institution, if we should look at um, other um, economies and how they, ha they are running it, um, you want to look at a company like Refinitiv. Refinitiv has grown into a, 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 a powerhouse on data gathering and data dissemination for financial markets, even though this is restricted to the agricultural sector. 
Um, this can easily be replicated in this sector, but then it needs to be an independent institution, an independent body that will have quality control and then oversight from the government. Thank you for that. Very precise. Dara was giving us a political answer. You were more skewed towards the private institution with a play or with a light touch of government um, governance at that level. Aisha, what's your take? So I'm going to go in tune with um, Deji. However, I'm disagreeing with Dara on the fact that whoever commences the data should house the data. But we have, you know, speculators, <laughs> we have commodity dealers, we have control, uh, collateral managers, even banks, insurance companies, the logistic companies that, that are core stakeholders in this ecosystem. They need information to help them plan ahead to help them know the kind of investment they want to make here. So it's not just about the person that comments to keep the data, no. We need it to be open so that there can be a transparency system. The governance method in this, um, about the data management should be more of a synchronization between business leaders in the agricultural sector and IT technology experts, whereby they work hand in hand together. Because if the IT experts just come up and develop tools that get at the data, but the business experts in the agri sector, they don't know how to, you know, disseminate it, analyze it, and use it to their advantage. There's going to be a problem. So also, if the business analysts or the business um, strategic leaders in the agricultural sector, if they come up with what they need, the numbers they need to gather, the kind of information they want to help them make more informed decisions, the IT technologies need to listen to them, adapt and create tools technological tools that would help them get at this thing and then analyze it that would help them, you know, make informed and better decisions. So it should be a public information that is open to all stakeholders in the ecosystem so that there can be a transparency, you know, reaching the system. Thank you. Thank you very much. The group chat is buzzing, so I encourage everybody to go there and let's engage on that. So we alluded that some key things came out, right? One is we need a sound IT infrastructure for this data, whatever data we're talking about, for it to be readily available by all parties. The other is we can't go this data route without the play or without the, the involvement of governments, whichever way they are. Either they are, they just sit at the governance level or they enable the ecosystem. Now the question is, at the end of the day, the idea is to either promote investment in the agricultural space or increase the viability or access of smallholder farmers to higher valued commodities or ready markets, ready markets at all times. Now, my question is, if we want to attract investment into Nigeria, what are the key data, that we, data sets that needs to be put in place to attract investments? Specifically, you want funds to come into the country to drive agriculture. What are the data we need to focus on to make available for all investors? Aisha, I start with you, then DJ and um, Dara. So the key data that we need to put in place to attract, you know, more of this foreign or investment to be trading and the exchange, we need to know how much does it cost to produce these commodities. We need data on how much commodities, how much produce, you know, can you yield? How much yield do we have? We need commodity um, data on what do we have left after the peak period? Because, you know, most of these commodities are seasonal. So we have the peak periods and the half peak periods. And optakers are interested in when, you know, they are readily available and when they are not going to be readily available so that they can target their pricing mechanisms. So we need data on current price, when it's peak period, when it's not peak period. We need data on credibility. The moisture content of some of these commodities are very, very important. So a lot of things that we need to put in place is data from the grassroots, from the farmers, what they produce, what they have readily available to sell, what went into wastage so that they can plan better so they won't make such, you know, they won't have such large wastage again. And what's left after the peak period. Thank you. Deji, in specific terms, we want to develop a business plan to attract investors. What are the key data sets that are required? 
Okay, for, for me in this sector, I'll be more cons I, I would like to approach it from a value chain perspective. Look at the pre op stream. Um, who are the people pro um, providing education to farmers? What are the inputs that are available? What is the volume of inputs? Fertilizer data, um, pesticide data, and so on. Um, seed data, um, I'm talking viable seeds. Um, then we go to the um, upstream. How much land is available? Um, how many farmers do we have? Like um, Jacqueline has been saying in the chat that we do not even know how many um, smallholder farmers we have in Nigeria. So we want to know what is the manpower in the sector so that we can, because the, the pre-upstream sector is going to feed into the upstream sector. Then you go beyond that. What is the production, the productivity of these farmers? Are they, so then you can easily use that to match back to the pre-upstream that, okay, are they getting the um, necessary inputs? Are they getting crop um, pest resistant varieties and all that? Then you now go to the um, um, distribution. Um, what are the farms or what are the markets that are available? Um, how much, um, 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 how much um, um, inputs do these industrials or domestic um, consumption need from these farmers? So that you can now match the um, production against the consumption. So these are the touch points I need. I think we need to map out by the value chain to be sure of, you know, how we can, um, you know, make a match between each um, sector of the each um, segment of the value chain to know um, what exactly the deficit is and what the surplus is and how to mitigate these um, problems that are already in the sector. Truly spoken like an economist. Thank you very much. Dara, what are the key data points that would be required to drive investments in Nigeria? Okay, thank you very much, Akin. Um, I think for me, I would want to go. Um, we need to establish that there are the, the right policies that are there to favor our investments when when any investment that is coming into the country also there needs to be data just like um, others have spoken there needs to be data that shows the um the the value chain as a whole and also the returns on investment the existing practices the existing investment so that when an investment is coming into the country it will be a right decision based on good government policies and based on um, um, cultural practices and um, the general business ecosystem in that particular sector. Thank you. Thank you, Dara. So at this point, I open it up to my so our listeners. Um, do we have any question? Anybody with any question that you want us to discuss to the pan, um, question to the panelists? Okay, so some of the co comments we are having in the chats are very interesting. Um, we'll just mention a, a few of them, right? Um, someone said, um, no one will enter an investment arena with a guesswork. We cannot attract capital, right? Which speaks to the need to have credible data across board. A lot of people are suggesting a private public participation to drive this, right? Um, so no doubt it needs to be a collaborative effort. All stakeholders need to be Im Im involved. Due to the role the government plays here, you can negate it. My last question to my panelists will be, yes, we have all this data in place. Who are the key users of this data? Who are the key users? Who are we collecting this data for? Who are they? Aisha. Okay, so... We are collecting this data for the corporate bodies, that is the banks, the insurance companies, the logistic companies that we need to come into play here. We're also collecting it for the collateral managers, the investment house. We're collecting it for the commodity dealers, the ones that you know you um, 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 control or manage your future contracts, your options and your swaps about these commodities. We're also taking it for the trade groups, the trade groups themselves, that is the farmers themselves, the cooperative society. So they'll know how well they're doing. They can track their progress along the line, along the, for the year. They can know how to, you know, 
um, enlarge their scope, how to improve their farm mechanisms, how to improve their fertilizers, how to improve their you know, cultivation process. So by the time they try out the cultivation process this season, and they see what they yield, and then they try out another method or another cultivation process the next season, they see the difference, they see how they can adjust and how they can secure you know, food for their own nation. So all these people put together, and many more, they need this data to be able to make them better informed decisions. Did you have a word to add to that? I am Miss DG. DG, you're muted. On my own part, um, I think um, it's um, three pronged or four pronged. Um, data empowers um, um, empowers um, um, industry players to negotiate. It um, allows for operations planning, um, allows for strategy and also procurement decision making, which is for the end users of um, these commodities. So um, a granular understanding of um, the supply market can only be um, well informed by um, available data and not just price data. I'm talking um, all round data of um, the depth of the markets and all that. Um, so the framework of the value chain would um, key into this um, essentially to um, you know, offer this value um, adds that this data is going to offer um, industry players. So that is just in addition to what um, Aisha has mentioned. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Dara, you want to weigh in here? Uh, so um, just like Aisha and DJ has mentioned, we collect data virtually for everybody interested in the agricultural value, value chain. And uh, most importantly, even for the government, because data will drive policies and policies will drive enabling environment for business. So um, that's why we need to collect relevant data for um, everybody. So um, the government, um, investors, the banks, everybody along, to farmers as well, everybody along the value chain uh, are users of this data. Thank you. Thank you. There's an interesting um, conversation in the chat um, that is liking um, the agricultural sector to the telecommunications and the banking sector. Is there a question coming on? Okay, so there's hello? an interesting conversation. Yeah, hello. Any question there? Yes. So the question I had, um, essentially, um, I've listened to the conversation so far. It's been really interesting in terms of um, how to get data, who data is used for. I think one of the things that would be good in terms of not just um, taking on a mammoth task, because at this point, it really is a lot of data that we're missing out. But can we look at also in terms of what are the major issues in the agricultural ecosystem right now? If it's going to be funding, then where is that funding primarily going to come from? And then prioritize data that is relevant for um, people to make these informed decisions. And if that funding is really going to come from foreign investors, if we're saying local capital is not available, then what do they typically wish to see before coming into bringing their foreign direct investment? Um, and in terms of, okay, if we even say capital as well, uh, I think you started with a statistic that said 5% um, of the funding goes to agriculture. Um, so you can look at it in, in several ways. Would, would some of that be in terms of CBN subsidies? Because when CBN gets involved, we then criticize and say, why should the CBN be getting involved? <laughs> um, yeah. But then we say, oh, it's just 5%. But that is still technically part of funding. And if it's going to be for the banking sector, for the private sector to get involved, then what do they typically want to see? If we say that finance is like the top three problems, there may be um, a, a, a strategic approach to a to, to dealing with this data issue is prioritizing the type of data that is most relevant to solving the, the most pressing issues rather than trying to develop every single thing at once um, rather than incrementally. So that's just my own I don't know, take. Thank you. Thank you very much. For that. I didn't get a name though. Lola. Lola, thank you for that, Lola. Really appreciate that. Any other comment from the audience?
Can I go ahead, Aki, and just build on what the young lady just mentioned? Please, please do. Please do. I put up my hand, but I don't think you noticed it. So, and that's why I said a PPP was the way to go. So the development finance institutions globally should handhold the federal government of Nigeria in such a way where they can actually outsource the central data. And the central data can be collated and it can also be for a fee. I don't mind asking, um, paying to get information once I know that the information is valid. The government as we speak do not have that kind of money to put up a central hub. So why don't you do a tender? and then give out the, the structure so that you're able to attract investments. I had the privilege to speak, uh, I think two weeks ago at a state function. The data I got was 2007. Who works with a 2007 data in 2020, to be honest yeah. with ourselves? <laughs> so please, maybe the position paper to governments will be, look, and then Ministry of Planning, we should put it on there, it should be a, a top burner for them. Look, this is what needs to be done. Go to the, to, the, to the World Bank and ask them, how did you do a PPP for this country? Handhold us to do this. Instead of collecting the money and coming to buy fertilizer, that's not what we need at the moment, or, mechan or, or uh, funding for uh, mechanization. I know mechanization is important, but to be honest with you, you bring those machineries in here, you don't have... Um, uh, the school to train the operators the operators go and then a farmer tells you the next year please don't touch my field with any with any tractor because they've killed my field because they operated on it wrongly you've gone and bring brought those tractors and the operators don't know how to handle it and tomorrow if the, the tractor is is down there's nobody to fix it so we're just running in circles thank you uh, um, thank, thank thank you Jacqueline sorry I think do you mind if I just um, uh, in... Hi, Lola, your line is breaking. So maybe when you have your internet back on, you can now come on top of that. Apology, you've been, you raised your hand. Can we get your perspective? Comment just after in response to that. Um, the, the issue I have Hello. is, I, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear can you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Lola, just hold on. Let's Apology come on board and Lola, you come up, up after that. Okay, interesting perspective uh, on the discussions of data. Data has been a, a key problem in agriculture and not only agriculture but many other areas. And without data, it's difficult to plan for any uh, national economic issue. And I think the problem with data is rooted in the foundation. If you don't have the right national data, it's difficult for you to even build the reliable data for the agricultural session. Until we get back to the basis of ensuring that data on sensors of individuals and the distribution across age, age range, occupations, and co is right, it's going to be very, very difficult. You're just spending money in there. For instance, if you just imagine if you can actually sit down and determine where all the farmers in this country are and then uh, where their farms are located or their locations. It's very, very easy for you to target them with whatever systems you have to generate data. It's easy to find out uh, where the markets are, where the farmlands are, or whatever. So I think to a large extent, we have to rapidly be able to compete whatever, in whatever way our national, uh, set, whether it's over a phase period or whatever. As long as we continue to use ex estimates and even knowing the number of people living in this country, mm -hmm. what professions or what occupations they have, it's going to be very difficult to get the right uh, type of data to, to even drive agriculture. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that. Lola, you're back up. Hi, Lola, are you still there? Yes, I am. Can you hear okay. me? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. You can hear me now? Yeah. Okay. So I'm saying that my perspective on data is interesting. I, I tend to look. Hi, Lola. Your line seems to be off. Okay. Um, any other person with any perspective? Um, as we round up, um, our time is already um, gone. So I'll just take two more comments 
if we have any Hello, can I? yes mr abiyo please go ahead yeah thank you good afternoon good evening good, af and good evening for all the inputs from uh, all the participants okay so i'm looking at have you looked at the possibility of uh working with in the investment promotion agencies of the state you know yeah particularly i i speak for the southwest because that's where i operate from and i know that majority of the and i know that majority of the states in the south in the southwest state they are by pa and as you as you know that the high pa are the farm agriculture is the mainstay of the economy in the southwest state. if uh if um working with working with the uh, the high PAs and uh, the effects or people in the in the sector working with high PA, even to host the data or to make contributions or to have a stakeholder approach to gathering data could go a long way to help because you know high PA as opposed to crowd investment into the into the various states and then um, I'm very certain that there will be if the if the proposal is clear and then can, they can see uh, the possibility of uh, crowding investment into the state and then support the farmers to, pro, uh, to produce in large scale to meet whatever demand that is coming from uh, some other place. Because data, as I have known, as I know, is uh, working with the uh, maybe um the ministry of uh, planning that everybody have been saying might not really really work because it's you, you guys are talking business here and i think it's the business minded agency of government should be you should be working with a business minded agency of government and not typical uh bureaucrat bureaucratic uh, agency so that's why i'm thinking that since most of the states have an um, ipa and then agric is the focus everybody is talking about diversification uh, flowing from the crash of oil price so i think that that is another channel that uh, that i think can also work in talking about gathering data for investment of a, of a policy planning so that's what i think thank you very much thank you mr B. last comment from the audience before we close out on this interesting session uh akika can you hear me now yes lola it goes to you okay. welcome back so, thanks yeah i i would say and similar to what the last speaker just said um i fully support that this is really from someone who is business minded because data as they say is the new gold so if we're talking about if we if we if we keep looking at other developed countries and saying oh but they have a national agency for agriculture and all of that we also need to consider that they may not necessarily have started that way or it was a government priority and that's why the government prioritized having that data and put systems in place now if you can't necessarily say the same about our government and we don't see that data gathering and and exactly all the things we've been talking about today is a priority for government then we shouldn't really sort of wait for them to to come up with what we are saying we need to gather to to attract the investors that we know are, are the ones that are going to drive this sector forward so um similar to the comments about oh who's the owner of the data is really the farmers they're really the sellers they're really the people that are there they're the people that are willing to give you their data and as some of the people have said it's expensive you pay for it but you are gathering data the government can't come to you and say oh no you can't ask the farmers how much they they sold or how many warehouses they have they really won't so if, if someone or if an organization is willing to make that investment in being this central data data based uh let's say custodian or manager then really it's a business decision and, and maybe when the government realizes the importance that organization would you know would put a high price on selling that government to, to the selling the data to the government uh, but it's certainly not something that you know i see any barriers to right now anybody can start gathering that data um you just have to decide that it's important enough and it's valuable enough if not now 
at least in five years time when the when the investors are looking to come in seriously and you're able to give them uh, tools and information to make wise investment decisions so you know that that's that's just my own take thank you very much Lola. thank you very much um thank you everybody for coming on board here um it's clear that the role of data is very very important and we can't estimate the importance of having accurate and reliable data in the country and it's also very it is also very clear that um you can't you can't dissociate the role of government in in terms of having a reliable data structure the same way you can remove the private institutions from structuring this data one thing that is clear is having the right data sets in place and having the right mechanism to capture this data is very expensive and the question that and the question will be how do you finance this um is the government willing and ready to finance agricultural data collation and dissemination um are the dfis aligned for you to gather this data and disseminate it does it make a business case for an individual for a firm to set itself up solely for capturing this data yes people are willing to pay for it but how much are they willing to pay for globally do you buy agricultural data or is it readily available from the government all these questions and more are what um, we've been able to unravel here and um definitely we'll, 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 we'll there will be more time to follow up on these questions and put more and get more perspective on how we can go about operationalizing the the data structure that needs to drive both investments into the country and then create a ready market where investment could readily flow to all users and consumers of this data. So in closing, I'll just ask for a one minute word from all our panelists, um, Dara, um, Deji, Aisha, just give us a one minute closing remark as we round up on this. Okay. Thank you very much, Akin. Um, my closing remark will be that we all know that data is very important and um, in all our different spheres, we should um, try to contribute to this cause of making data available and if possible, synchronizing the data that we have. And um, the future will be good for everyone, eventually. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Apadeji. Um, my part, I would just like to say um, never neglect data in every decision you are making, um, especially in business and more especially in the agricultural sector, because that will be um, the most credible tool you can use to, um, you know, make informed decisions. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Aisha? Okay, so data is important and going on what one of the audience members mentioned prioritizing our data is important also so by the time we prioritize our data and we have for or we have handhold help from who or international bodies that help us gather this data and credible data we need to also you know look at our point of view where we are now where we want to be what we want the future of our agricultural sector to be with data data can make or make you you can't just get out and get out the data. And like one of the participants said, anyone can come up. Coming up with a phone to enable you to get that data is, is going to be very, you know, <laughs> it's going to be very huge because you have to take a lot of, synchronize a lot of funds to come in. Just to get our information from a particular like 13 state or there about, I remember rubbing minds with even you, the moderator, you know, and you can refer me back to about, it cost more than a million to get our data from 13 states. So imagine how much it should cost you to get our data from 36 states. It's going to cost a lot. So you can't just say somebody will wake up one day and say, we need everybody to put hands together come up with credible data, we can move forward and we can secure food for our country if we get accurate, credible data. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that, Aisha. Thank you everybody for joining this webinar hosted by Apex Commodities Exchange. We appreciate you. Thank you for the comments. Um, everybody that spoke, spoke out of passion both on the webinar and in the chat group and we really really appreciate you um apex i will encourage you guys to visit our website um we have some interesting price um data and information up there 
We also have a methodology for our pricing, our market data. Feel free to check it out, share comments with us, give us feedback. Um, to build the data we require to drive investment in Nigeria and promote the agricultural business is a joint effort. We can't do it alone. We need all hands on board. And we look forward to working with each and every one of you to drive the availability and credibility of this data in the country. Thank you once again. And um, looking forward to meeting with you guys when next we have a webinar. Really appreciate it. Do have a great week ahead. And thank you for joining our webinar once again.